our Heavenly Father. It is again, our Father, that you have blessed your children to be able to come before your presence to offer a worship service unto thy most holy name. We realize, our Father, that we are unworthy, but yet, our Father, that you have given us this privilege to come before your holy presence, and we thank you, and we praise, and we glorify thy most holy name. We pray, our Father, that you would please be in our midst this morning. Forgive us for the sins that we've committed and grant unto your servants more faith, more understanding, so that we may be able to serve you in truth and in spirit. Father, you have been so good to your children. You have given us this right, you sent your only begotten son that he would shed his blood that we might have a right to serve and to glorify the most holy name. We pray, our Father, that you would please continue to walk before your servants, continue to guide us in this life. Help us to be able to walk the path that you've set before us so that we may be able to attain that eternal life that you promise unto your children. We pray for our loved ones, wherever they may be this morning, that you would watch over them and guide them, that you would protect them from the many evils of life, that they may be able to thank you and to go on serving and glorifying the most holy name. Bless the households of all of your servants throughout the world, especially those, our Father, that are being persecuted, those that are being oppressed, those, our Father, that had to go in hiding because of their life being threatened, those that are in jail. We ask your Father to please look in on all of your servants this morning and grant them your Holy Spirit. As we all listen to your holy words this morning, we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit to inspire all of us, that we would become stronger in our faith to serve and to glorify the most holy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we call on you, thanking you, Lord, for being obedient to the Father, dying that we might have a right to everlasting life. And we are asking you, Lord, to please continue to mediate to the Father for us, asking the Father to hear our prayers and forgive our sins so that we can continue to serve you and our Father until the end of our life. Our Father, as we return to you, be with our brother this morning that will teach your words. Grant him your Holy Spirit that he may be able to teach your words with clarity so that all of your servants and those that are not your servants yet will be benefited in listening to your holy words. We truly believe this morning that you've heard our prayer, that you've forgiven us for any sins that we've committed because we ask everything in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen.
beloved brothers and sisters in the faith, once more we are very thankful to our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, not only for the continued borrowed life and strength that we enjoy, but most especially for the faith that has been instilled in our hearts, knowing full well that our services to our Lord God, such as our worship, will never be in vain in the sight of, of our Lord God. Our beloved brothers and sisters, one of the key privilege of being chosen by our Lord God, belonging to his people, is the right and privilege to call upon him. And not only that, to be heard and answered by our Lord God. But there are times or instances when others fail to receive what they ask of our Lord God, despite their incessant prayers and long anticipation, their supplications remain unanswered. For this reason, they begin to harbor doubts in their minds and sometimes even ill feelings against our Lord God. Now, is it possible that these things do happen for a reason? and that we should all be able to learn from all of this in order for us to reflect in our life, to see what we are doing wrong, things that are no longer in accordance with the teachings of our Lord God, in the hope that we may be able to correct them and go back to the path that our Lord God has set for us. Now, in this lesson that Brother Ranyo G. Manalo has prepared and taught, we will learn that the doctrines that have been prepared, especially by Brother Felix Y. Manalo and Brother Iranio G. Manalo, reflects how pristine the doctrines, the faith that has been established based on the Holy Scriptures and how applicable they were during their time and even during the time of the early Christians and most especially during our time. So in order for us to benefit from this lesson that has been prepared by Brother Ranyo G. Manalo, we should all open our minds, our hearts, to fully understand the message and how it applies to each and every one of us. Because there are times when we go through difficult moments in our life, when we go through trials, tribulations, when we are persecuted and oppressed, when there are troubles, sorrows that bother us. And during these moments when we pray to our Lord God, we also experience times when we may think that our Lord God is not hearing us or does not want to answer our prayers. Now, is this something that we should be surprised? No. Why? Because even the early Christians the early people of our Lord God also experienced this. So let us study how they experienced it, why they experienced it, and how we can apply it to our lives. Let's read what's written here in Isaiah. Chapter 40 and the verse is 27. This is what is recorded. Israel, why then do you complain that the Lord doesn't know your troubles or care if you suffer injustice. What did the early servants of our Lord God lament? Which could be the feeling of others today. Israel, being God's nation, was complaining. What were they complaining about? Because they felt that our Lord God doesn't know their troubles or care if they suffer injustice meaning they were going through troubles. They were going through injustice and they were suffering. And they were complaining that it seems that our Lord God doesn't care about them. Now, why did the early people of our Lord God feel, felt that God did not care for them? Let's read the same verse in another translation here in NIV. It says, Why do you complain, Jacob, when do you, why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? The early Christians were complaining because their cause, they felt, was being disregarded 
by our Lord God. And we know the feeling then when somebody that we expect to care, to love us and protect us, all of a sudden, it seems that he doesn't care. All of a sudden, it seems that everything that we do are now being disregarded. And that doesn't feel good. Especially if the nation of our Lord God, during the time of the Israelites, were feeling that our Lord God was not caring for them or does not care about them and was disregarding their cause. Now, what made them think that they are being disregarded or that our Lord God does not care for them? Lamentations chapter 3 and the verses 5 up to 8. He has shut me in a prison of misery and anguish. He has forced me to live in the stagnant darkness of death. He has bound me in chains. I am a prisoner with no hope of escape. I cry aloud for help, but God refuses to listen. Now again, brothers and sisters, these are moments in the time of the early Christians that they felt they're de- being disregarded and God doesn't care about them. One of the few things that they felt is that they were shut in a prison of misery and anguish. And they were living a stagnant uh, darkness of death. So imagine if we have our problems, our trials today, and multiply that nth time. To make that feeling the same as they felt before. Like we were bound in chains. Prisoner with no hope of escape. And during those moments, they cried out for help. But instead of being heard, instead of being answered, God refused to listen. Because of this, if this happened to them or is happening to us and we feel so helpless, that nobody's listening, nobody's able to help. One of the few things that might result from this, we can read in Lamentations 3.18. And I said, my strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. This is the point when we lose hope. Not hope in life, not just hope in our problems, but hope in our Lord God. That's why, brothers and sisters, if the early chosen people of God experienced this to the point that they lost hope in our Lord God, who was supposed to take care of them as his nation, as his people, and seems doesn't care, seems that they are being disregarded, that they are already in prison with no hope, and then he refused to listen they got to the edge where they have no more strength and no more hope. And they lost hope in the help of our Lord God. Now, brothers and sisters, all of us may encounter this at one point or several points in our life that we feel that our Lord God doesn't listen, that we too feel so helpless and as if our Lord God refuses to listen to each and every one of us. Come to think about our brothers and sisters who are perishing, languishing in jail, those who are in hiding, those who are being persecuted and oppressed, as if everything that they hope for is not coming through, as if the problems that they're encountering doesn't seem to have any end There's no light at the end of the tunnel. So there there is a risk that there would be those, especially in our time, who will also have their hope in our Lord God perish. Let us try to understand what happened to God's people then that made their hope in our Lord God perish. What did they experience that Their strength and hope was already gone. Let's continue reading Lamentations 2, 11 up to 12. My eyes are worn out with weeping. My soul is in anguish. I am exhausted with grief at the destruction of my people. 
Children and babies are fainting in the streets of the city. Hungry and thirsty, they cry to their mothers. They fall in the streets as, as though they were wounded and slowly die in their mother's arms. What happened to God's people then that made them experience such severe trials that tested their faith to the point that they lost hope in our Lord God? This was during the time of Jerusalem. Jerusalem used to be the most, the one of the most populous, well-known chief cities in the ancient times. But when the Babylonians, led by King Nebuchadnezzar, invaded the city, they ransacked everything. They destroyed the temple. They burned the king's palaces and houses of well-known people. And that invasion left countless dead bodies. Men, women, young and old, scattered on the streets. The Israelites were enslaved and brought to Babylon. But the poorest of them were left behind to work in farms and vineyards. That was the wretched condition of Israel, God's people, during the ancient times. So they suffered immensely. And when they cried out to our Lord God, they felt that they were not, they were being disregarded, and our Lord God does not care for them anymore. Now, brothers and sisters, are there times that we also feel that way? Are there times that we go through such severe and adverse conditions in our life when our faith are being tested? We're going through trials, fiery trials in our life to the point that we might say, is our Lord God even listening to us? Is our Lord God even care? Does he even care if we survive this or not? So we're trying to understand if they were God's nation then and they suffered immensely and they had doubts in their faith in our Lord God, then how can we use that knowledge of what happened to them to benefit us today? Because we may also be experiencing the same thing. Why? What happens when faithful and even zealous people of God experience severe trials? Let's read what's written in Job chapter 4 and the verses 3 up to 6. In the past, you have encouraged many people. You have strengthened those who were weak. Your words have supported those who were failing, falling. You encouraged those with shaky knees. But now, when trouble strikes, you lose heart. You are terrified when it touches you. Doesn't your reverence for God give you confidence? Doesn't your life of integrity give you hope? What happens when people of God, no matter how zealous or faithful, in, uh, encounter severe trials in their life? Just like what happened here. For those who used to be the ones who encourage many people, used to be the ones who strengthened those who were weak. This may be ministers. This may be church officers and even active members. They were so faithful and zealous that they were the ones inspiring and encouraging other people to be faithful to our Lord God. They were the ones who were used as instruments to strengthen a lot of those who were weak. But then, when we encounter trials... When trouble strikes, according to the verse, there would be those who will lose heart. Why? Because they are terrified. Because of fear. That's why it begs the question, doesn't your reverence for God give you confidence? Can't you look back at how many times our Lord God has saved you, given you hope, protected you, given you everything that you have done? No matter how much we think about them, when you're at that point that you're going through the fiery trial, it seems that you can't get out of it. It seems that all of those things that happened in the past doesn't mean anything because of fear. You are paralyzed with fear of what can happen or what won't happen. And because of that, 
you can no longer encourage people. You can no longer be the one to strengthen others who are weak. How does our Lord God feel about that? If we used to be the ones who strengthen other people, and now because of fear, because when trouble strikes, we can no longer be that. Let's ask the Bible here in Revelations chapter 2 in the verses 2 up to 4. I know what you have done. I know how hard you have worked and how patient you have been. I know that you cannot tolerate evil people and that you have tested those who say that they are apostles but are not and have found out that they are liars. You are patient. You have suffered for my sake and you have not given up. But this is what I have against you. You do not love me now as you did at first. Beloved brothers and sisters, how does our Lord God feel? If we used to be the ones encouraging, strengthening, inspiring other children of our Lord God, and all of a sudden we stop. We stop fulfilling our duties to our Lord God, whether you're a minister, whether you're a church officer, an active member, if we stop, our Lord God says, I know what you have done. Everything that we have done in the past, in his honor, in his service, our Lord God knows all of that. He knows how patient we have been. He knows that there will be those who would try to derail us, deceive us with false teachings, pretend that they are preachers or apostles or prophets. But we were able to discern right from wrong. We stuck to the pristine doctrines that we have received and chose not to stray away from the teachings of our Lord God. We found out that they were liars, that they were lying. And even though our Lord God knows everything that we have done in his name, He still has this thing against us. What is that? You do not love me now as you did at first. And the only person who can answer that is ourselves. How are we before when we first received the words of our Lord God? When we first fulfilled our duty to our Lord God? How zealous were we? How how much did we prepare for all of those times that we will be performing our duties to our Lord God? And compare it to now. We are not here to judge anyone or even point fingers at anyone. But there is a message from our Lord God to each and every one of us. And to those who would hear this, there are two things that can happen. They too can disregard it. You know, the saying, go in one ear and out the other, as if nothing happened or as if they didn't hear anything. Or when they hear this, as if our Lord God is the one talking to us, telling us, I know what you have done. Telling us, I know how much you have endured for me and how patient you are. All of your sacrifices for me. But then... You do not love me now as you did at first. And when we hear that, we start to reflect on our life and realize God is right. I was, I'm not as faithful as I was before. I'm not the way I look at my duty now as I did before. What should we do if we come to this realization? Let's read what's written in Revelation chapter 2 and the verse is 5. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Brothers and sisters, it is very important for us to allow the message of our Lord God to go deep into our hearts. So that we would know how we are now. How we've fallen so far that our Lord God is now knocking on our hearts. So that we will not be completely fallen. And what is the instruction or the advice? Repent. 
what else? Do the things you did at first. Are you a minister? Are you a head deacon? A deacon? A deaconesses? Are you a choir member? Are you active in attending daily prayers, Bible studies, and worship services? If you are not now, then go back and do the things you did at first. But again, brothers and sisters, if our Lord God is asking us to do the things that we used to do for Him, and then when we refuse, when we, re we do not repent and do not listen to His advice, then the Bible says, I will remove your lampstand or your light from its place. That's why there are those that unfortunately who did not listen to the call of our Lord God, their light has been taken away. And if there's something that we should fear, brothers and sisters, it's not losing the material things that we have in this world, but losing the light that we have in our hearts, in our minds. Because once our Lord God removes that lampstand, that light that he has given unto us, then we will be in darkness. How does a true servant feel when he is able to finally realize what God wants him to do and will have that courage to follow or obey our Lord God? Psalms 42, 4. My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walk among the crowds of worshipers leading a great procession to the house of God singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. You now, if we know that this is not how we are before, it breaks our heart to remember how it used to be. When we walk among the crowds of worshipers leading a great procession. So the Bible is reaching out to those who are used as instruments to lead the worship services. Let the words of our Lord God resonate to those ministers who may have been crippled by fear, to those church officers who may no longer be fulfilling their duties to our Lord God, to those active church members, worshipers of our Lord God who, has, who have grown cold, in their faith. And if we are to listen, then we would know that our Lord God still cares for us. That our Lord God is reminding us to do the right thing. But then again, brothers and sisters, like we said, we are not here to judge anyone. Because all of us may have gone through this path once or several times already when we are conflicted whether to do what our Lord God wants us to do, but then there would always be that reason or those reasons that would hinder us from following him. You know, I've heard it so several times, brothers and sisters. Brother Lowell, I, I want to do the right thing. I want to continue with my duty, but this is my problem. And they would give their reasons. I would just listen to them. I would give them the same advice from the Holy Scriptures, but I would not tell them what to do. Why? Because it's up to each and every one of us to follow our hearts, to do things voluntarily, because that is our offering to our Lord God. And our Lord God wants all of our offerings and sacrifices to be voluntary or from our heart. We all know it's hard. We'll, we all know it's hard if we are to follow our Lord God, but then we would lose this something that we value as well. Or we might lose things that we have worked hard for. Or we might put ourselves in danger or risk. There are two ways to look at reasons. Because we might think of them as reasons, but God might think of them as excuses. That's why it's so hard, brothers and sisters. 
I must confess that I have gone through that several times in my life. That I would like to give excuses to our Lord God why I should stop, why I should not do this anymore, why I should just focus on other things. But then God would always remind me and my whole family why we are all here. Now imagine that, brothers and sisters. Why do you think our Lord God called you? Why do you think our Lord God chose you among the multitudes of people? Is it just to be silent? Is it just to go with the flow? Is it just to exist? And when we do finally think about that and realize that our Lord God wants us to perform our duties unto Him, what should be our feeling unto Him? Because we would go through this life with so many sorrows. We would be discouraged and disheartened so many times. But how should we face all of those? Psalms 42, 11. But oh, my soul, don't be discouraged. Don't be upset. Expect God to act. For I know that I shall again have plenty of reason to praise him for all that he will do. He is my help. He is my God. Brothers and sisters, we all go through discouragement. We all get upset and go through sorrow but always expect our Lord God to act on our behalf. That is when we continue to follow his commandments and not the other way around. We cannot say to our Lord God, God, I will do this for you, but first do this for me. Or I will follow you and perform my duties, but this is what you have to give me first. No, it doesn't work like that, especially to our Lord God. And thank God that a lot of people have finally realized that and do not go back to the thinking that for as long as they follow man, then they would be exempted from anything else that God would expect from them. And this will always happen, that God will act on our behalf when we follow our Lord God. What if we don't? What if we realize all of these things but still chose to do what we want or refuse to follow the calling of our Lord God? Then there is a risk that we will lose God's love because of fear, because of pride, because of risks of losing everything that we have all of these things might equate to losing the love of our Lord God. Now, other people might say, I'm not afraid. It's not about that. That's not the reason why I chose not to completely follow the teachings of our Lord God, especially today. So let's find out how else can one lose God's love towards him. First John 2.15 Stop loving this evil world and all that it offers you. For when you love these things, you show that you do not really love God. So there is a choice between loving our Lord God and loving this evil world. No, it's not to say that this world is evil per se. But if the things of this world would be the reason why we will be hindered from following our Lord God, then that evil world is what equates to saying to our Lord God, I don't really love you as much as I love this world and everything that it has to offer. Why would we lose God's love if we ever prioritize or love this world more than our Lord God? Ephesians 2, 2 up to 3. You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world, he is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were, sub we were subject to God's anger. 
just like everyone else. Why would we lose God's love if ever we would love this world more? No, this world is what represents everything that we want for ourselves. Following our passionate desires, our inclinations to our sinful nature, meaning these are the things that would contradict the teachings of our Lord God, thereby refusing to obey our Lord God. And when this world is the one reason that we refuse our Lord God, then we are not obeying God. We are obeying the devil, the enemy of our Lord God. That's how we also lose the love of our Lord God. So what should we do, brothers and sisters, if ever we do realize that the, we have fallen from God's expectations, that we have not reached his standards, that now we finally realize, oh my God, I've been doing this wrong. I haven't been the son or daughter that you have want, ever wanted me to be. I have not fulfilled my duties unto you, and I have failed you so many times. What should we do? Psalms 145, 14 up to 20. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their loads. The eyes of all look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in everything he does. He is filled with kindness. The Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries for help and rescues them. The Lord protects all those who love him, but he destroys the wicked. Brothers and sisters, if we have realized that we have done wrong, let us repent. Because God will always be able to help those who have fallen and lift those bent beneath their loads. Because of our load, because of the burdens that we carry, sometimes or most often time, we fall. We stumble. But allow our Lord God to lift us up. Who will be those who when they call to our Lord God, He will listen. Those who call on Him in truth, those who are sincere, those who will follow the teachings of our Lord God. Now, isn't that something that we all want? That when we cry for help, our Lord God will be there to rescue us. He will be there to protect each and every one of us. Other people might be thinking, brother, I want to do the right thing. I want to correct my ways. I want to go back to being active in my duties to our Lord God. But I'm afraid maybe our Lord God will no longer listen to me. Maybe our Lord God has been fed up with me and will no longer accept me. Let's read Isaiah 30, 18, 20 up to 21. And yet the Lord is waiting to be merciful to you. He is ready to take pity on you because he always does what is right. Happy are those who put their trust in the Lord. The Lord will make you go through hard times, but he himself will be there to teach you. And you will not have to search for him anymore. If you wander off the road to the right or to the left, you will hear his voice behind you saying, here is the road, follow it. Brothers and sisters, our Lord God is just waiting for us. For each and every one of us, our Lord God does not discriminate. Our Lord God will not rebuke us forever. He is waiting for us so that he can be merciful to each and every one of us. And if we think about everything that we are going through right now, no matter how bleak, how dark it may seem, Always remember, it will be a teachable moment for our Lord God to teach us so that we will experience this and endure it. It will increase our endurance, our spiritual endurance. Brothers and sisters, especially those who are going through hard times at this very moment, 
this is our Lord God's way of talking to us. That if we are wandering to the left or to the right, this is His voice telling us, here is the road, follow it. My son, my daughter, you're no longer in the right path. You're being veered away from me. Go back. This is the road. This is where you should be at. Follow this. And if we listen to that voice, brothers and sisters, if we think about everything that we have done wrong, and still our Lord God is trying to get us back, if we look at everything that we have done that has fallen short on God's expectation, and yet this is His hand pulling us up, we should all have that same anticipation that our Lord God is here telling us to follow the road that He has set before us. And before, before we end our lesson for today, brothers and sisters, if our Lord God is knocking on our hearts, speaking to us through the Holy Scriptures. What should we do? How should we answer? What should we ask our Lord God? Let us read the final verse here in Job 11, 14 up to 17. Before you turn to God and stretch out your hands to Him, get rid of your sins and leave all iniquity behind you. Only then, without the spots of sin to defile you, can you walk steadily toward to God without fear. Only then can you forget your misery. It will all be in the past and your life will be cloudless. Any darkness will be as bright as morning. Brothers and sisters, none of us is perfect. We are all filled with sins and wickedness. We have fallen short on God's expectation. But here we are. Let us all together pray to our Lord God so that He will be merciful and forgive us so that when we are able to receive God's blessing, then we will forget all our misery. Everything that we are encountering right now will be in the past. And let us pray for that life that will be cloudless, that there would be no darkness and it will be like a bright, bright morning for each and every one of us. Brothers and sisters, look deep in your hearts right now. Whatever sorrow you might be feeling, whatever trials you are going through, pray to our Lord God. Have your own personal prayer. Tell Him what you need. Tell Him what you have always been asking for. Allow this moment when He is teaching each and every one of us to learn from the past, from the Holy Scriptures, and apply it to our life. Let not one of us be having a stone-cold heart not to follow the voice of our Lord God, who is now teaching us to let go of the things that has been hindering us from following Him. And with God's mercy and His grace, we will be cleansed once more, forgiven of our sins, and allow us to follow Him until we reach the grace of salvation. Let us all stand and we shall pray. Our Lord God in heaven, thank you so much, O God, because this lesson could not have come at a better time. Because you know your children so well. And there are those who are suffering. There are those who are in the middle of a tunnel filled with darkness. There are those who are in prison waiting to be set free. There are those who are running away because of fear of being persecuted and oppressed. Father in heaven, by ourselves, we do not know what to do. We do not even know why you called us here. Because we know for ourselves we are not worthy. We know, Father, that we have never reached your standards. But why are we here? Because of your love and your mercy. You have given us this path to walk on. Father, we are afraid to walk on it. 
because of all of our iniquities. That is why we beg of you, Father, before we step foot, may you please cleanse us of our sins and iniquities before you. Allow us to be worthy to call upon you. And when we call upon you, Father, please make us feel that you are listening. Like what you have done in the past several times in our life. You have always been watching over us, listening to our every cry. Our every supplications has never been on deaf ears. Because you are there to always guide your children. Father in heaven, bless the families that are attending this worship service. Reach out to them wherever they may be. Send forth the Holy Spirit in their household. Bless each and every one of them, Father, with the health coming from you. If there are conflicts within the family, please give them resolution, Father. If there are those who are sick, please help them, Father. Heal their bodies coming from you, the health that we need, so that we may continue to use this life and strength in giving glory to your holy name. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters who are constantly persecuted and oppressed. They are voiceless and helpless. Allow us to be instruments of your will so that your hand may stretch forward to them and help them in their times of need. And if they are sorrowful, if they are losing hope, Father, send forth the joy coming from you so that they would be inspired knowing full well that all of this will come to an end and all of us will be vindicated and set free to magnify and worship your holy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much. Because of you, the Father always listens to our prayers. He cleanses us of the sins that we have committed and continue to bless us with the things that we need so that we may be able to continue following you and the Father in heaven. Our Lord God in heaven, we have heard your message. We listen with our hearts, Father. Allow us to to have that obedient heart, Father, that if we have grown cold in our duties, Father, please give us the strength and courage to renew our faith, to renew our life, and we will do things as we did at first so that we will be able to give you the love that you deserve as our God to, so that we may be able to give you that proof that we are worthy of the grace of salvation coming from you. It is our faith that you have heard our prayers, you have forgiven our sins, and that you will continue to guide and protect your people. For all of these things we ask and beg in the name of our Lord, Christ Jesus. Amen. the grace of salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.